fifth session of our study. Bismillah. نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم الروف الرحيم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء ولا الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدين يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من اثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الانجيل كزرع اخرج شتعه فازره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزراء ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة واجرا عظيما وعن السلمي قال أخبرنا محمد بن الحشا محمد بن الحسن الخشاب قال أخبرنا محمد بن الحسن بن الخشاب البغدادي قال أخبرنا أبو سعيد أحمد بن محمد بن زياد العربي الصوفي بمكة قال أخبرنا أبو يحيى محمد بن سعيد بن غالب الدرير قال حدثنا وقي عن العامش عن ابي صالح عن نبي هريره رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تسب اصحابي فوالذي نفسي بيده لو ان احدكم انفق مثل احد ذهب ما بلغ مد احدهم ولا نسيفه وعن السلمي رضي الله عنه قال حدثنا الشيخ أبو زيد محمد بن أحمد الفقيه المروزي قال حدثنا إبراهيم بن شيبان الزاهد بقرمسين قال حدثنا علي بن الحسن بن عبد الغمر قال حدثنا منصور بن أبي مزاحم قال حدثنا أبو شيبة عن الحكم عن مقسم عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال نظر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى هنزلة الراحب وحمزة تغسلهم الملائكة وعن السلمي قال أخبرني أمر بن محمد بن إراق المصري إجازة أن علي بن الصحل الزاهد الدينوري حدثهم قال حدثني عبد الله بن محمد بن بشار قال حدثنا مسلم بن إبراهيم حدثنا حماد بن سلمة حدثنا علي بن زيد أن أقبة أن سحبان أن أبي بكرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في قول الله تعالى ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين قالهما في هذه الأمة my dear brothers and sisters we are reading the book of our sheikh sheikh al islam dr muhammad tahir al qadri which contains the riwayat the narrations reported by imam abu abdul rahman al sulami in relation with different subjects at the moment we are studying from last week and this week we will complete it inshallah aziz the uh, hadith study on the subject of the ummah of the holy prophet and his merits and most importantly the companions of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and we learned last week the hadith which is on uh, page number three and that is reported on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an. And the student of Sayyidina Abu Huraira, Abu Saleh, Zakwan, we were not able to talk about him last week and about Sayyidina Abu Huraira. Inshallah, we will complete our studies on them. 
and we learned a few things about him. The actual hadith, the text of the hadith was that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said, do not curse, do not criticize, do not swear to my companions because they were being very close to the Holy Prophet and because of their Iman and because of their character and because of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That are our, my words, but Rasulullah said, the one who hold my life in, my, in his hand, if someone of you give the gold in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equal to mountain of Uhud, he will not be able to reach to 500 gram or 600 grams charity of the companion or half of it. This is their parrot because they were able to reach to this state, status because of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And towards the end of uh, the slides, there is a hadith number seven of the book and eight. In the first one, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was able to see standing in Medina al standing amongst his companion. But he, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, was able to see the angels were washing and giving ghusl to Hazrat Hanzala, the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Hamza, another companion and uncle of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we will read about them in details, Sina Hanzala and Sina Hamza in our next week lesson and Abu Bakara and other companion. Uh, and the next hadith number A is uh, reported on his authority about two verses from the Holy Quran. One verse from the Holy Quran, Sullatum min al Sullatum min al that Ashabul Yameen will be a great number, a big number from those people who was early in earlier people, the former people, and a great number from the later people. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said those big numbers of the farmers and big number from the later, they will be in this Ummah. Means it is not a big number from the people who lived before our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, among the Ummah of the other Prophets. And those they will come in the Ummah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the later uh, big number from the later people. Uh, that is not uh, what it is meant. The Holy Prophet peace be upon him pointed out that it means Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a big number, a great number, a big company, a big jama'ah will come out uh, from the former people who lived before farmer mean the early uh, group of the an early community big number of them will go to jannah and big number after now as far as the time is concerned we cannot specify that this is former time and this is later time but one thing is very clear that the holy prophet peace be upon him said the best time is my time. That could be the former and and every time after that is a later time. O oh, Allah and His Prophet, peace be upon Him, know best that what was meant from Avvalin and what was meant from Akhirin. Those they lived close to the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they are Avalin, and those they are going away from his time, that is Akhirin. What is the time limit? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the companion and we spoke about the verse of the Holy Quran. 
from Surah Al Fatih. And in that relation, we learned that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, pointed out that Al Hadith Salih, the outer look and the good conduct and the graceful appearance and the balance in the life, moderation in the life, is 25th part of the Nabuwa and 25th part of the prophethood, which means that if the Nabuwa, the total and totality and the total good of Nabuwa, it is all good, mean totality of the Nabuwa is divided into 25 parts. Those uh, 25th part will be made by the moderation, the graceful appearance, and the good conduct. And that was reflected in the life of the early community, which is the foundation of the Ummah of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Every character, every life, every style, every sunnah goes back to them. Amongst them were some companions, as we spoke about last time, total number of them is thought to be 124,000, which is uh, the opinion of uh, Imam Jalaluddin Shayuti, and he, he actually uh, emphasized on that, and most of the scholars that take that 124,000 number, 10,000 of them were mentioned in the books, but only 1,800, 1,800 companions reported the hadith of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, one or more. The one who reported the most of them was in Abu Huraira, more than 5,374 ahadiths. And although he lived only two years and three months with the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. But in that relation, you need to understand that as the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and being with him, there were two types of attitudes which were developed. Some of them, they thought that it is big responsibility to report the words of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And the most careful amongst the companion was Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, being very close to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Straight away he accepted Islam while he was in Makkatul Karma. Among the companion, he was the only one who did not ask for any sign, who did not ask for any miracle. And he was close companion and he was friend and he was like brother to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And when the marriage to Sayyidina Aisha Siddiqa was mentioned, some people thought that how the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, can marry her while she is his niece because of the closeness of Snab Bakr Siddiq to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, they considered them a same family like brothers. But he reported only 40 to 45 ahadis. The reason being, and if you bring the, the, the uh, reputation, then we might reach to 90 ahadis. But if you drop the reputation, that's only five, 40 ahadis. And the reason is thinking that it is very big, big responsibility, huge responsibility that saying the words of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and reporting them could make mistake. Why? Because Let's say we might not able to report and say those words exactly what Rasulullah said, or the context can change, or we might have understood something, but Rasulullah meant something else, 
and that can mis that can mislead. And the second attitude was, yeah, this is a wealth. This is a special wisdom from Allah, a special knowledge from Allah, and we should take care of it and we should teach it. And those companions, they devoted their lives to second part of attitude, second attitude. Amongst them were Ashab Sufa. Those, their number reached from 70 to 700. And uh, in Kashful Mahju, Azul Sayyidina Datta Ganji Bakshali Hudubiri has given the names of them. That was Jama'atul Sufiya. And some scholar says that the Sufa made the word Sufi, which was later on developed and they got the currency and used in the Ummah of the Holy Prophet As we are reading the al marriyatu Sufiya or marriyatu Sufiya, the uh, reports reported by the Sufis, so this point is very relevant. And at the head of all those 70 or 700, they had different number at the different times. And some people might translate that word as Abu Sufa as the, uh, the immigrants camp. I mean, the place where everyone who used to immigrate to Medina Tul Munawra and they uh, used to stay there. And that place is still marked in the house, in the, in the mosque of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and still is being used as uh, Sufa and the people sit on it and they pray on it. And if you had the opportunity to go to Medina to Manawa, always uh, go there and pray at that Sufa place uh, with the niyyah and with the intention of seeking knowledge and learning knowledge and connecting yourself to those great companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Their number sometimes was 70, sometimes was 100, sometimes was 200. And the maximum number went was 700. Sin Abu Huraira was one of them. And at the top of the list, uh, he used to manage their affairs. And Rasulullah gave him this, this responsibility. And inshallah, we'll talk about Sin Abu Huraira uh, later on. And the remaining uh, narratives of that hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade us to criticize, to think negative about the companions uh, was one of them is Abu Saleh Zakwan bin Abdullah. Number one characteristic or one quality of the first thing which you need to know, he's known as Abu Saleh. He is the great student of uh, Sin Abu Huraira. Al Amish, about him, we spoke last week. He says that he heard over 1,000 hadiths from Abu Saleh. Now you can see that how one scholar, one student says that I have heard 1,000 hadiths from one student of a companion. And 1,000 hadith means it could be reputation, but most importantly, so one sahabi, one companion is listening, uh, uh, one, one uh, uh, tabi'i, he is, uh, or taba tabi'i, he is listening that. So it's a mean he is actually uh, heard the hadith from Abu Saleh, who heard from different companions. There could be reputation, but the number, if you put that together, and if, if it would have been reached to us uh, safely in the recorded way, in the form of books, it would have definitely a big, big number of hadiths, not just the hadiths. The first quality that he was freed slave of, see the Umul Mu'mini Jawairiyah, and we'll talk about her who was she as being to the wife of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and as being the mother of the believers. 
He was one of the great tabi'i and great scholars of Medina al Munawwara. He spent most of his time with Sayyidina Abu Huraira. He heard from Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa, Sayyidina Abu Huraira, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas, Sayyidina Abu Sayyid al Khudri, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar, Hazrat Mu'awiyah. May Allah be pleased with all of them. And his students were Suhail bin Abi Saleh, his own son, and Al Amish. We learned about him last week. Zaid bin Aslam is the big name of Taba Tabirin, and uh, Bukair uh, bin Al Ashja, also another great scholar. Abdullah bin Dina, this is also one of the great Sufi and uh, great, great uh, spiritualist and Sufi scholar, along with uh, having asceticism and the standards of asceticism pra practiced throughout of their life. Uh, Ibn Shihab Zuhri and Yahya bin Sa'i. These are big names, and they learned from Taba Tabi'in, big name from Taba Tabi'in, and they learned from Tabi'i Abu Saleh. And uh, he had a business of selling oil and key to Kufa, from Medina to Kufa. Kufa was a new settlement uh, made by Sina uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. And uh, because of that uh, tent uh, area and the Muslim uh, army and soldiers were made settled there, uh, it had great number of companions and it had become the great uh, seat of learning. And the Hanafi madhab uh, was influenced and actually founded, uh, and then came out from that place, Kufa, and then from Baghdad to the rest of the world. And it is reported, uh, Zahabi said that he had long beard, and al Amish said that uh, one day, Abu Saleh made azan, and the imam became late, and he just stood up and led the prayer, but he struggled to complete the prayer because of the uh, softness of his heart and because of crying. This shows the character of the companions and their companions and the early community that how strongly they were connected to the prayer and through the prayer, they were connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they reflected and they showed the characteristics of love and the characteristics of close proximity and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as having very soft heart and having very, uh, uh, the, the eyes shedding tears and being very close to uh, in the in the in the in the while they were praying and why they do 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 that because they saw the holy prophet peace be upon him and they saw the companion and they themselves had that practice and looking at these qualities rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam praised them as being uh, the best of the ummah the foundation of the ummah the crux and the fruit and the result and the whole characteristics of the Ummah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, first three generations. And we learned that Abu Saleh was freed slave. And that was also a very important point to note that most of the scholars or the majority of the scholars throughout the history of Islam, when there was slavery in practice, they were freed slaves. They devoted their life, and naturally we can understand that that the people can be uh, not in too much worry of their uh, going, visiting, earning responsibilities. Being slaves, they were provided with uh, their daily needs, and then they were able to carry out the jobs and the work for their masters. And at the same time, 
learn from them. This is uh, very important. He was freed slave of said Ummul Mu'minin, see the Juwayriya, and uh, Nafi was freed slave of Sina Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu ma, and he was also teacher of Ibn Shihab Zuhri, and uh, Sina Imam Malik was student of Sina Imam Zuhri as well. So we can see that in the early community they were many many freed slaves. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam brought a culture. In that culture, he sallallahu alaihi wa sallam gave the sense of responsibility towards the human beings that when somebody is your slave, you should take the responsibility of taking care of him rather than taking the jobs and work from them, rather than using them. And then free them and teach them and provide them the facilities which were uh, later on become the foundation for the whole knowledge coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered through the Holy Prophet وسلم, and spread in the ummah of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. And this is also a special uh, branch of uh, Asma'ul Rijal. Uh, if we learn how many freed slaves were among the tabi'een and among the companions. They reported the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once somebody is freed uh, by someone, he will be known by the tribe of uh, that person. We know the Sayyidah Juwariya. Her name was uh, Barra. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam changed her name. Barra mean pious. Barra mean ascetic. Barra mean devoted. And there was type of uh, self-praise in the name. That's why the scholar says the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, changed her name from Barra to Juwayriya. She was daughter of Al-Harith bin uh, Abi, uh, he was uh, daughter of Haris bin, I think somewhere, Darar. Haris, Haris bin Abi Darar. Yeah. Haris bin Abi Darar was chief of uh, tribe Banu Mustalak. And uh, What happened, the Banu Mustalak were close to Madinatul Munawwara in the fifth uh, year of Hijra or the sixth year of Hijra, some scholars said. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent them the message to accept Islam, but they preferred to fight and Ghazwa happened. And during that Ghazwa, they were defeated. And according to the custom of that time, if someone is defeated, the whole of the tribe, their women and their young men, they will be enslaved, they will be made slave, and every property or everything will be possessed by the uh, conqueror or by the person or by the group or by the people who are victorious. So that happened and there are about 100 houses and the family from uh, the 100 houses mean uh, 100 different families and their member, members were uh, prisoners of war and they were enslaved and they were brought to Madina Tul Munawwara and among them was the uh, daughter of the chief of the tribe, Al Haris bin Abi Darar. And he himself came as well and he accepted Islam and he was one of the great Sahaba, one of the great companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. And when they brought to Madina Tul Munawwara and see the Juwariya was amongst them, Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqah, the hadith is down there. Imam Hakim reported that hadith and that is beautiful. That's why I put it there and he uh, reports uh, with his own chain of transmission. Haddasana Yazid ibn Ubaidillah ibn Qasid, Anabihi and Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Sawman, 
عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قال تصاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سبايا بني المصطلع and when the uh, slaves came from Banu Mustalaq to Medina Tul Munawra, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, took the khums, I mean one-fifth of uh, the whole wealth out and gave to the poor people. And what was remaining, he divided it and distributed it among the people. If there was a person fought with on the horse, he was given two portions of the spoils. And if the person was on foot, he was given one portion of the spoils of war. And Sayyidah Juwariya bint al-Haras, she came in the portion of Sabit bin Qais bin Shammas al-Ansari. Uh, he was a great companion of the Holy Prophet and she was given to him. What she did, she agreed with him uh, al-Muqataba. Al-Muqataba is a written contract between the slave and the master that the person, the slave, will give a certain amount of money and the master accepts it. According to Zahiri Mazhab, that contract is binding, compulsory, if it is written, but according to Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, Hanafi, other four Mazahib, it's not binding, it's just Mustahab. If he is able to continue and he's able to do that contract and fulfill that contract, the, the slave, uh, well and good. Uh, and it is uh, recommended and advisable that it should be carried on, it should be implemented, but it's not compulsory. Uh, so she had a contract with Sabit bin Qais, her master, that uh, she will give uh, nine aukia. And one aukia is equal to 213.6 grams. 213.6 grams uh, of gold or silver. And most probably, uh, aukia, when word aukia is used, they used to measure that, uh, use that term for gold. So which is about two kilogram of gold. And she said that she will pay two kilogram of gold to Sabit bin Qais and he will free her. After making that contract, she went to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa says, when they came and I looked at her, I, 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 I liked her or the word which she used as uh, uh, I felt very jealous with her because she was very sweet lady and she was very beautiful. And I thought that if Rasulullah Sallallahu will look at her, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would look the same way I am looking at. And subhanallah, she uh, was able to comment on the, uh, on the whole attitude of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, I did not like her because I knew that the Holy Prophet peace be upon him would look her and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will uh, look at her in the same way as I am looking at her because she is very nice and very well-mannered lady. She is the daughter of the chief and she is very sweet and very beautiful. And the same happened, she says, as uh, after going to Sabit, uh, after having the contract with him, she came to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and she said, that Ya Rasulullah, Ana Juwairiya to Bint al Haris, Sayyidu Qawmi. I am Juwairiya Bint al Haris. I am the a daughter of the chief of the tribe. Kada Sabani min al Amr. Ma Qadalimt. And whatever has reached to me, what has happened to me, you know it. There is nothing hidden from you. And I am in the slavery of Sabit bin Qais, but I have written contract for nine aukiyah that he will free me and so you help me. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before she complete and she asked for help when she was telling I have written contract between myself and Sabit uh, to free me for nine 
Okiya, as she said these words, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, "Awa khairam min dalik," or better than that, mean better, better than you think. And she said, "Ma huwa? What is that better than freedom?" Kala, o adi anki, kitabatake wa atawazaj atazavajuki, that I will pay off your uh, your that contract money, and I will marry you. And she said, "Naam, ya Rasulullah." Yes, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet peace be upon him said, Qad fa'al. I have done it. I mean, when they said these words, it mean the, the words were the most important. The job was done. The, the uh, contract is completed. And now, after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married her, the people got the news that See, the Juwariya, the daughter of the chief of the tribe, is married to the Holy Prophet and she is Ummul Mu'mineen. Faqalu ashara Rasulillah. And they said, oh, these people are in laws of the Holy Prophet wasallam." So they set all of them free from their hands. Whoever was a slave from Banu Mustalik, the companion set them free. And there was about 100 houses, Sayyid Aisha Siddiqua says, 100 families, and there was many members of those families. All of them were set free after they found out that Rasulullah has established a relationship with them of the marriage. And through the marriage, they are related to the family of the Holy Prophet. They become the family of the Holy Prophet, and they become the family of in-laws of the Holy Prophet. قالت عائشة سيد عائشة صديقة سيد لا أعلم امرأة كانت أعظم بركة على قومها منها She says I have not seen the blessings more blessing coming to any tribe because of the lady than سيد جوارية what she brought for her tribe that gives many lessons number one Marriage of Rasulullah was not for the purpose of only worldly, worldly player. That was not the reason. He وسلم, married to establish a relationship with different tribes. So the people will honor them, people will benefit them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower his mercy upon those people as well. And this is one example of that she was about 21 years old when she married to the Holy Prophet and the other thing is the whole culture look at the whole culture and look the environment in which they lived everything was from the Holy Prophet to the Holy Prophet And it is reported, Imam, uh, there are seven ahadiths which she reported from the Holy Prophet all together. Two of them are in Bukhari and Muslim. And uh, she was very pious. She was very virtuous lady. And being Ummul Mu'mineen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her more high place close to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She spent her life in piety in the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is reported that one day, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, came to her and she was worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, sitting in the prayer mat. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went back and then came back again at the half, the midday, and uh, she was still sitting on the prayer mat. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked her, are you still sitting there and still praying and remembering Allah? And she said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Shall I not teach you those words? If those words are weigh, weigh, uh, if you weigh them with whatever is mentioned in those words, they will be equal to the weight of those things which are mentioned. And if you put them in number, they will be equal to the number of those they are mentioned. What those are mentioned in words? They will be, the number mentioned in word will be equal to the number in reality. 
and the number or weight mentioned in the words will be equal to the weight of the real things. Shall I not tell you those words? And she said, yes. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, Subhanallah, adad khalqi. Glory be to Allah according to the number of his creation. So these are four words, Subhanallah, adad khalqi. But these four number words are act in number and in weight according to the real number of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, zinat arsh, glory be to Allah, according to the weight of Allah's throne. And subhanallah, rida nafsi, glory be to Allah, according to the player of uh, according to his player and subhanallah midada kalimat and glory be to allah equal to the ink of allah's words equal in ink of his words so three times he sallam said read them subhanallah adada khalqi subhanallah adada khalqi subhanallah adada khalqi subhanallah zinat arshi subhanallah rida nafsi subhanallah midada kalimat Subhanallah, how great these people, how they were and they are and they will be. That the Holy Prophet peace be upon and they, 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 they memorized them, they kept them, those words. And then he, she, she, uh, she her, her, uh, her actually, uh, we spoke about her and has Tazkira came in relation with Abu Saleh. Abu Saleh is the student of Sina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala. And Sida, Sida Juwariya passed away in uh, 56 Hijra in the same year as Sina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and one year later. 676 A.D. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I mean these words, an Nabi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These words, millions of Muslims, billions of Muslims from the time of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, till today, till the day of judgment, will continue mentioning them and they are familiar with this name. He has reported 5,374 hadiths. Hazrat Abu Huraira accepted Islam on the hands of At-Tufail ibn Amr al-Dawsi, who was chief of Daw's tribe. And Daw's tribe lives in Al-Asir of Fihama, which is uh, uh, close to the coast of Red Sea in Southern Arabia. This is a very interesting story. And if you find uh, some English version of At-Tufail uh, bin Amr al dawsi you must read that. He accepted Islam before the migration. He, he was friend of uh, Walid bin Mughira, he was friend of Abu Lahab and Abu Jahal. He was very close to them, very close friend. And he was one of the great poets, At-Tufail, who is uh, uh, actually chief of the tribe of Sina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and from Banu Daus. And uh, he says that he came to Makkah al mukarma and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, started his uh, uh, recitation of the Holy Qur'an. And started his message of Islam, and the people of Makkah were very disturbed. And he says, "When I came, all of my friends, those they were mushrikeen, at the, uh, and they spoke to me, and they said, this man has made us very weak. His words are like magic, and that magic is very fast and swift to impress and impact. And the person can go away from his brother, from his wife, from his children." because of the power of his words. So please, we will suggest you do not speak to him and do not listen his word. And he says, what I did, I became 
very uh, apprehended and I put cotton buds in my ears. And I said, no, I will not listen his words. Next morning, when I went to Haram and I went to uh, the uh, house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I found the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was praying there in the courtyard of Haram. And I found him and he attracted me. And I said to myself, come on, Tufel, what are you doing? You are a poet. You are a wise man. Allah has given you and the God has gifted you a good quality to find out what is good, what is bad. You go and listen to him. And if his words are good, his message is good, and they are powerful, and they are right and wise, accept them. And if they are not, you will be able to find out. He says, few words I heard of the recitation of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and they attracted me. I loved them. And when Rasulullah finished his prayer, I followed him. He entered into his house and I went and knocked it. And he invited me inside the house. And I told him, I am a Tufail bin Amr al Dawsi. I am the chief of those tribe. And these are people, my friends, that came here. They have told me, <clears throat> do not listen to you. I have heard a few things from you. I like them. Please, can you send me? Uh, uh, can you uh, tell me something more? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, recited, "Qul huwa Allahu ahad, qul auzbir bil falak, qul auzbir bil nas, wa qul huwa Allahu ahad." He recited, and some other verses he recited. He says that I straight away said, "Subhanallah, this cannot be the words of some human being that was so powerful." I accepted Islam. And I accepted Islam and said, Ya Rasulullah, please can you give me some sign? Uh, that's I will take that sign to my tribe and they will become Muslim. And Rasulullah, he said, looked at me and my face became bright, full of light. It was shining like a moon. And I said, no, no, Ya, ya Rasulullah, no, not on me. Nothing on me because the people will say, that some magic has happened to me or I've changed myself or something has happened to me, some illness and some ailment has occurred on me. So rather than attra being attracted, they will run away. So then he says, okay, Rasulullah took my uh, stuff, the, the, the stick, which was I used to carry. He took that and he just wiped it and that became full of light. It used to give light in the, in the dark night, like a tube light. It became like a tube light. And I carried that to my tribe. And I went to my tribe. The first person who met me was my father. And I said to him, no, I got nothing to do with you. You are a mushrik. You keep away from me. He said, why? Why? He said, because your deen is different than my deen. And he said, my son, your deen is my deen and he accepted Islam. Same happened to his wife. And the next person who accepted Islam on his hand was Sina Abu Huraira. He was orphan. He did not have uh, uh, his father there, but uh, his mother was there. And uh, he says, Tufail bin Amr al Dawsi says that Rasulullah advised us to stay there at your tribe. And we stayed until Rasulullah migrated from Mecca to Medina. Badr happened, Uhud happened, Khandak happened. And after that, in year seven year of Hijrah, they migrated and came to Medina. There was about 80 families of Banu Daus. They came to Medina and they settled in Medina and Abu Huraira was one of them. And he says, I came to Mecca. He accepted Islam in Mecca. He says, when I came to Makkah al mukarma with uh, at tufail accepted Islam, and Rasulullah asked me, what is your name? And I said, Abdul Shams, the son of, uh, servant of Shams, son. And Rasulullah said, no, Abdul Rahman. And he said, oh, my name is Abdul Rahman, Ya Rasulullah. Oh, Messenger of Allah, my name is Abdul Rahman. And Abdul Rahman bin Sakhar, uh, some scholar says, 
uh, he was uh, Abdul Rahman, some said Abdullah, some other names as well, uh, but he is known as Abu Huraira. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi called him Ya Bahir as well sometime, and with the hadith will come, it's Sahih Bukhari, where he Sallallahu used him, uh, word Abahir, Hir, or the, 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 the father of kitchen, because he liked kitchen, uh, uh, cats and played with them. He used to carry them in his sleeves. He, he just had them in the sleeves, subhanAllah. And uh, one day he came to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and was crying. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, what has happened to you? Why are you crying? And he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have invited my mother towards Islam many times and I have asked her, requested her, but she does not listen. And today when I spoke to her, she uttered a few words which were disrespecting, which has saddened me too much. That's why I am crying. So Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please make dua. For my mother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her hidayah and bless her with iman. And he says, as I said this, Rasulullah sallallahu raised his hand and he said, oh Allah, guide the mother of Abu Huraira. And he says, before Rasulullah sallallahu finished his dua, I ran towards my home. I ran, I ran towards my home, said, subhanallah, I'll see the effect of the dua of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and I say, he says that as I reached at my home, the door was uh, closed from inside. And I heard the water was splashing inside. And I knocked at the door and my mother said, no, don't enter. Don't come inside. Uh, wait where you are. And I kept waiting. She changed her clothes. And as I went in and she said, I have taken bath. I am ready to accept Islam. He cried. He cried again. He went back to the Holy Prophet وسلم, and said, Ya Rasulullah, first I was crying because of the sadness and now I am crying because of the happiness. My mother has accepted Islam. Subhanallah. This was, and he, in other narration, says that he says, uh, I ran towards my house and thinking that I will see whether I reach to my home uh, before the dua of Rasulullah reached to the Arsh. And I, I wanted to see that. But dua of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi affected before I reached to my home. He became the governor of Bahrain, the appointed governor of Bahrain during the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. And after a few years, he found out, Sayyidina Umar found out that Abu Huraira has become very rich. And uh, he came to Medina. He called him in Medina to Manawara and said to him, from where did this wealth came? And said from breeding and uh, horse racing. And uh, Sayyidina Umar said, uh, give this whole money to the Baitul Ma, give it that to the to the to the in the treasury and put that there. And he says, I did that. And after a few years, you know, Omar asked me again that uh, accept to become the, the become the governor. And he said, No, I don't want to be because uh, because uh, I don't want to be uh, insulted anymore. My, my, my money is taken. And there are so many things about him uh, and stories. And uh, Sabit bin, uh, uh, Zaid bin Sabit anhu also reported that we were three people and one day sift, sitting in Sufa uh, among the companion. And uh, we made dua. Rasulullah we were learning. And Rasulullah came and sat with us. And uh, uh, then we made dua, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Ameen. And Sina Abu Huraira made dua, Ya Allah, whatever my two companions have asked, uh, I ask you uh, that and plus I ask you for the knowledge which I will never forget. 
Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Ahmi in Sahih Bukhari he uh, it is reported that he said ya Rasulullah I forget things and uh, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said spread your sheet I put my chadar on the floor Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua three times I picked up that chadar and that sheet and that I put it on my heart and from that point onwards I was not able to forget a single word I heard and once the governor of Medina Marwan bin Al Hakam wanted to test him his memory and what he did he called him at uh, his uh, governor house at the palace and uh, asked uh, a scribe a person to write down each word what he says behind the curtain abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala did not know it so he asked him few things and sin abu huraira Uh, told him those things that the hadith of the words whatever he spoke and he said write down every word and after one year he called sin abu huraira again and kept that paper in front of him and said to him that tell me uh, last year what you told me and the conversation what happened between me and you and marwan was shocked that sin abu huraira repeated those words and conversation which happened between them one year ago word by word there was not single word missing and that was the power of the memory because of the dua of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was given he says when i used to become hungry i used to put some stone sit down on the path on the way when the companion used to pass by one day i was very very hungry and i sat down on the street i said i have to see the past by and uh, he looked at me assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and i said wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah i said uh, do you have some ayah or some hadith of the holy prophet and i wanted that he will say okay abu huraira uh, come with me we will have food we will have lunch or dinner and then i will speak to you the words of the quran or the words of the or the hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he did not do that then sayna umar came and i asked him the same thing uh, do you have something to tell me and the reason was that he will ask me to come with me and we will have uh, eat something no nothing happened and i remained hum- hungry and after that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out and uh, he said abu huraira and i said at your command ya labbaik ya rasulullah at your command ya rasulullah he said follow me uh, come with me he did not ask anything he can come with me and i entered the house and when we entered the house we found a bowl of milk there and uh, his family uh, was there and they had that bowl of milk and the rasulullah asked him from where this has come and he said yes allah so and so has gifted it somebody send it uh, and the prophet peace be upon him said okay abu huraira call all of your friends and there were 70 of them ashab suffa suffa call all of them suffa people he says i was thinking what is going to happen now is a one bowl of milk we are 70 of them and we might not have i might not have the drop he was he was say he said that i was thinking in my mind ya allah uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam should tell me that i should drink first and then uh, the other people but anyway i went there called them they came all of them we sat in a circle and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said abu huraira pick up that bowl of milk and give to your friends brothers and he says i gave to the first one i was looking at him and he was drinking and i said abu huraira you know these 70 people you will come in the end and there will be nothing for you and i'm thinking in myself and when that first person drank and gave back me the bowl there was nothing decreased from the bowl and milk was same as i gave to him then i gave to the next one we gave to the next one 70 of them they uh, drank and the milk was not decreased milk was the same this is sahih hadith in bukhari 
Sahih al-Bukhari. And then at the end, when everyone drank and became full, Rasulullah said, Ya Aba Hir, oh, the one who hold the kittens, is it you and me left? And he said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, we are left. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Ya Abu Huraira, drink, sit down and drink. Ishrab, sit ageless, we should drink. Sit down and drink. He said, the drink. And then Prophet, peace be upon him, I, I, then uh, he said, drink more. I drink more. Then he said, drink more. I kept drinking. Until third or fourth time when he said, drink more, I said, no, Ya Rasulullah, I can't. I'm full. There is no place left, nothing left now. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, took it and drank and finished that bowl of milk himself. So my dear friends and brothers and sisters, this, this is the character, this is the life in which our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, raised them. Imam, Imam al -Ambiya, the last of all of the prophets, drinking the leftover milk of his 70 companions. 70 companions. And he gave them first. And then he finishes that off. And Sayyidina Abu Huraira says, leftover was drank by the Holy Prophet. These are his words. Leftover was drank by him. Sallallahu alayhi wa So this is Sayyidina Abu Huraira, and there are some other stories as well, many other stories, and try to read about him. He is one of the great characteristic, a great character who, who dedicated himself to the knowledge. And he encouraged people. He used to become, he was a naib, he was the uh, assistant, naib uh, governor of Madina Tul Munawara. Uh, after Marwan bin Hakam. And he used to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the words, I was orphan, I was raised up in very tight and difficult situations. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me married to Busra, his, his wife. And then he, radiallahu ta'ala, used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his family. They had divided the night one third of night he used to worship, one third of night his wife, and one third of night his daughter. And what they used to do, one will worship Allah, and before he go to sleep, wake the other person up. Then he goes to sleep, wake the other person up. The whole night at the household, they will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the to follow uh, their path and follow their way and through their way follow the way and the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah we will talk about uh, Sayyidina Hanzala and Sayyidina Hamza and uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakra these three companions and the chain of transmission which I've read uh, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma is also there. So, so four companion and some scholars, those they have uh, and we have not learned about them, but the hadith are very small that Rasulullah saw uh, Hanzala and Hamza being washed by the angels when they was martyred. And this is subhanAllah special, special gift uh, for the Ummah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the heaven and the earth looks like same as far as the Ummah of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is concerned. And the time of the companion. Uh, so, so, so in this uh, light of this hadith, uh, we can say the Ummah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Holy Prophet, the companion of the Prophet, are the place where the earth meets the heaven and the heaven meets, meets the earth and they are together. That's why the hadith is reported there by Imam Sulami that Hanzala and Hamza was washed by the angels 
نظر رسول الله. And we have more responsibility than anyone else as because we, we carry the message of the one who made the heaven and the earth meet at one point and that he himself is the point and his companions and his followers are those points and the Sufis and Audiya Allah are those points. And according to your status, you will make the heaven meet the heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum. Does anyone know you can questions? ask your questions? Uh, uh, but just give me one minute to get the ready, uh, you get the questions ready. Okay. And give me one minute, there's somebody at the door. Let me see. <clears throat> so if anyone has any questions can type it moment to think the other hadith that uh, sheikh had mentioned is this one here uh, earlier on in the session uh, about the verse of the surah <laughs> Talk about reviews next week. Those of you that haven't joined the WhatsApp group in order to get slides and updates, you can do that. Let's put the link now in the chat. You can join that. Um, okay, I've got one question here. Salam alaikum. Sorry, brothers. Hey. Yes, I've got two questions there. Uh, yes, to me. one is about um, what is it that Sheikh Hassan mentioned regarding uh, Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Shah Kareem in terms of the number of narrations. Uh, the Sheikh al-Islam mentioned in his book, uh, the small booklet, is called Al-Qawr uh, al which is actually uh, about uh, Sayyidina Hassan Basri, his connection and relationship with Sayyidina Ali, being his student. And in that, he mentioned that Sayyidina Hassan Basri reported and uh, narrated over 12,000 hadiths from Sayyidina Ali Karamallah. But uh, unfortunately, he, Sayyidina Hassan Basri, did not mention the name of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah because the Umayyads did not like the name of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah should uh, be mentioned. Uh, and he told his students that when I say that Rasulullah said or Rasulullah did this and I do not mention the name of any companion, it means I have heard that uh, or it is reported to me from Sayyidina Ali Karamallah uh, Two things mentioned, 12,000 hadiths and when he does not mention the name of the companion, it means he has heard from Sayyidina Ali Karamallah And the reason, reason was the oppression of the Umayyads. They did not let anybody to call uh, the name Ali. And this is also very unfortunate that for almost 80 years or so, the companion, uh, the companion and the tabi'in and the uh, tabi'in, they did not have their name, children name, Ali or Hassan or Hussein. From Taba tabi'in it was started when the Banu Abbas came, but there was a period when Hazrat Muawiyah 
uh, died and uh, Yazid and after the killing of Sina Imam Hussain alayhi salam, martyrdom of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, from six, 60 Hijra till uh, about 140 Hijra. So for 80 years, Ali, Hassan and Hussein was banned. The names were banned. And during that period, much, much was reported from Ahlul Bayt, from the family of the Prophet, particularly Sina Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajir Kareem. But unfortunately, uh, sometimes the name is not mentioned and uh, something uh, which should come to the Muslim Ummah did not come the way it should have come. Yes. Is that what you wanted to ask or something else? That was the question that I had. There was another question um, that was yeah. related to the class. It's, um, is there a concept uh, that exists such as eating 14 dates on the 11th night of Rabi' al-Thani and that it leads to shifa of stomach ailments? Um, that's the question. <laughs> Uh, Rabi Usani 40 and uh, 11 nights or days. 14 dates. 14 dates. So you eat 14 dates. 40? Yeah, 40. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. Okay. No, it is this 14, 11, and eat for in Rabi Usani. There is no concept of that, but. Uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet, peace be upon him, recommended uh, eating seven or five or three dates, or odd number of dates, uh, three, five or seven, early morning, and that will help to reduce the poison, and no poison, he says, the word is that no poisons will affect the person who will eat uh, seven uh, or five or three odd number of dates of Madinah tul Munawwara or Ajwa. Uh, that is what is Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Hadith says. Some scholars say that should be Ajwa and Ajwa is only in Madinah tul Munawwara. Some scholars said any date of Madinah tul Munawwara and some scholars said any date because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used those words and dates particularly are very uh, full of uh, nutrition and plus uh, anything in the stomach or cancer, cancerous, which is poison basically, uh, which will help uh, that person because there is fiber there, there is uh, nutrition there, there is every element which is needed for the person, there's sugar there. So that's why it helps. And uh, dates, yes, up to salmon, and uh, it helps for the cure. These two concepts are established. The time and 14 and Rabi Usani, not. There could be some experience of some scholar, which I am not aware of that, or some might have suggested something to his, uh, uh, some students and uh, in relation with Sina Ghosul Azam, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, but I am not aware of that. So sometimes the number, sometimes the date and time is mentioned by the scholars uh, for their students and disciples and uh, murids, which is perfectly okay, but that is limited and we cannot make it general. Exclusive. Yeah. Yes, but anyone else got any questions? That's the questions I've had come in. You, I saw somewhere your something sent by uh, WhatsApp as well, but I was not oh, yeah. able to look at it as well. I mean, I will do that inshallah this yeah. week sometime. Yeah. yeah, I will hear that and then I will respond.
Yes. Anything else, Richard? It doesn't seem as though anybody has any questions, so. All right, okay, so you continue. I mean, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina wa Muhammad wa Mubarak wa salli alayhi. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamdana. Rabbi zidna ilma, Rabbi zidna ilma, Rabbi zidna ilma. Rabbi ghfir wa antakhir wa rahmin. Sallallahu ta'ala ala khat Muhammad wa ala khat. La ilaha ilaha. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah feekum. Inshallah, see you next week.